Is that comic book that you just found in your mom's attic worth $7,000? That's probably not. Up next on this video from Bronzeville Comics. Hey there, comic book community. This is Jim from Bronzeville Comics coming to you with another video. Before we get started, like, comment, subscribe, do that stuff that, that helps the channel. I really appreciate it a lot. If you enjoy the content that we're putting out there on a regular basis, we try to have videos every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 10 a.m. Also, follow us elsewhere on Instagram, Bronzeville underscore comics. On whatnot, Bronzeville underscore comics. We do sales every Monday night at 10 p.m. Eastern time. Tomorrow night on... Uh, what is that? Uh, August 1st. We're going to have a Daredevil sale. Tons of silver and Bronze Age Daredevil books. And also follow us on uh, eBay. Check out the store in the description in the link below. So I'm going to talk about um, the... I'm going to use a specific example. And there are two lessons to be learned from this. Um, one lesson is for the people that know about comics... And the other lesson is for the people that don't. So we're going to start by talking about the people that don't really know about comics, which includes the um, person who's trying to sell this comic book. I actually came across the listing on Facebook. And on Facebook, um, there was a, uh, a listing that kind of boggled my mind. Um and it was for a pretty standard book. So let's take a quick look. Okay, so here I did a quick search um, for the book that I saw on Facebook, which is Batman 243. So we see a fine buy now for $27, 19 coverless for $2, uh, in conjunction with 244 for 97 30 Oh, wait. 6950 Oh, that seems maybe a bit high, but it does say it's as mint as it gets. So this is something that, well, I'm curious. Let's see what we have. Okay, so the description is that it's as mint as it gets. The seller has no feedback. Okay. Um, but if we look at the pictures, yeah, I'm seeing that it's probably not quite as mint as they think it is. We see definitely a number of spine ticks and there's something going on up there above the to and stories uh, here's a little bit better look at the front cover this other pick um actually i want to just zoom on it yeah there's a definite thumb crease and probably like a what would that be like an eighth of an inch tear right above the s um so um, other than that i mean the book is in pretty nice shape um back cover yeah, there's something going on right there at the top um, on the right-hand side. It looks like maybe a little bit of tanning around the edges. Nothing major. Um, you know, and then we see some staple stress here, especially at the top staple. Um, but, I mean, look, that inside back cover is pretty pretty white um, on the interior, at least. Um, inside front cover, what do we got going on here? Similar. Right? And, you know, it's in pretty good shape for what it is. Now, the description... As mint as it gets. In sleeve for 50 years. And is it just me, or does using the word sleeve pretty much indicate that you don't know a lot about comics? Um, until yesterday when I took it out for photos, taking through old base in the box, forgot I got it, playing 19, da, 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 you know, this whole story. Um, you know, whatever it is. In sleeve its entire life. Inside binder quality. Okay. So, why? Why does this person think that this book is worth nearly $7,000? Well, if we go quickly to cover price. Okay. Now, obviously, this seller doesn't have access to cover price, but that's something we'll discuss. 
Um, Raw Comic is about $25 for this book. If we look at the sales history, okay, a 9.8 once sold for $7,000. And even there, I think that that's a bit inflated um, compared to the nine. I mean, it was $7,100 four years ago. A couple of nine sixes only sold for $1,700. Uh, the most recent high grade sale, at least let's look for one this year, very recently, an 8.0 sold for $250. So, yeah, maybe you could extrapolate up to a 9.8 of $7,000, um, you know, but not a lot have come to market. And this is um, a Neil Adams cover, not a huge key, but uh, it's a sought after book, but not immensely so. So let's kind of break this down. Now, I'm going to start this, and and maybe I'm guilty of this as well, but um, I do think that seasoned collectors get a little bit of a, a chuckle from um, postings like this. And when I saw it on Facebook, the only comment I made on Facebook was that I'm here for the comments. And there were some very pointed comments. Basically, in looking at the photos, rough grade, I would give it is probably about a 6.5, which makes it about a $50 book. <clears throat> so why think you're going to get, a, you know, a hundred, more than 100 times that for the comic? Um, so the first thing is for, for season collectors. Basically, it's entertaining and frustrating to see listings like this because... You know that the, the seller isn't realistic. And probably the best advice is to just move on and ignore it. Um, you know, you're not going to make them an offer of $45 and have them accept it. They're going to eventually have to come to the conclusion that their book isn't worth $7,000. And that's not what they're going to get for it. Um, you know, if it's someone local that maybe is looking to move a collection you can leave your name out there and just say no i think that's you know i'll make you an offer but i don't think that it's worth what you're looking for good luck you know if, listen if if somebody pays him seven thousand dollars for this comic book good for him you know he's, he's gotten a nice chunk of change um <clears throat> i don't see that happening and I don't think that this seller is disingenuous. I think there are sellers on eBay that list things for extraordinary amounts, hoping to take advantage of perhaps someone who is in some sort of diminished, diminished mental state. Um, maybe they had a little too much to drink and are just kind of like, you know, buy something on a whim on eBay or, you know, kind of like the person who hopes that when they call an octogenarian about their extended vehicle warranty that they'll get personal information that they can they can exploit. Um, I don't think that that's this user. I think it's just someone who got big eyes, saw a comic that had value to it, and is thinking that it is worth what he thinks it is. So just, you know, move on. And obviously I didn't move on because I, I made this video, and um, I thought there was that interesting lesson for, for people who know comic books understand what they think the book is worth if someone is not on the same planet as you in terms of the value the book's value walk away <clears throat> um i did not directly engage this individual um on the and some people in facebook comments were trying to, to correct him and he was like the, the person trying to sell really didn't want to hear it um and that's fine the other piece of advice here is for the inexperienced seller. And I think there's a parallel that we can draw as comic book collectors. So a lot of the people that watch this channel have a pretty good um, understanding of what comic books are worth, their um, relative value based on condition, that sort of thing. Um, but most people, most people don't. They just think that this particular comic book, you know, Amazing Fantasy 15 sold for $3.6 million. That's what it's worth. 
not that it's a graded nine point whatever it was as opposed to a raw poor copy um and I draw the parallel is there's a lot of nuance. And recently, Bryce Comics did a video about hard work in terms of um, buying and selling comic books, as, as is true in, in any endeavor in which you want to make money. Hard work is rewarded. And that hard work for many people that are interested in comic books as collectors slash sellers that want to get the most for their money is doing the research, doing the research on grading, doing the research on the value, knowing where to find what you need. I had a college professor one time who gave me one of the, the I thought, the best pieces of advice is knowledge is not what you know. Knowledge is knowing where to find what you don't know. And now with the internet, we have a lot more availability to find out what we don't know than we did when I was in college 7,000 years ago. So I'm going to draw a parallel. Now, comic book collectors sometimes are able, able to overlap into other types of collectibles, but not always. But let's say that you inherited a collection of stamps or sports cards or coins. Imagine, knowing what you might know about the comic book market, imagine projecting that into gaining that knowledge and expertise about any of those other types of collectibles. Um, and those, those are fairly common, simple ones. Um, I, I don't know what coins are worth. I wouldn't be able to tell you by looking at a batch of coins, which one is the valuable one. Um, I wouldn't know how to take care of coins. I was in a hobby shop looking through comic books and somebody came in with coins and the, um, it was mostly a coin shop and they had some comics and he was talking about the cleaning of coins and the, the fact that it can they can tell when it's been cleaned, it loses some of the, um, the, the, the I'm not sure, the luster, but there's something on the, the coin that you don't want to lose, sort of like the gloss on the cover of a comic book. Uh, so um, that nuance to the collectible is something that it takes time to develop the expertise in. Now, fortunately, uh, there is the internet. There is YouTube. This is one of many comic book YouTube channels. There are comic book YouTube channels that talk about grading and cleaning and pressing um, and speculating and all sorts of things about the marketplace. The fact of the matter is, look at all of them. Knowing where to find what you don't know, right? I don't know right away what all the key issues are in a particular run, what variant covers there are. Um, you know, the values of variant covers, the values of certain comics, I know where to find that information. Like, I don't know off the top of my head what a Batman 243 and a 6.5 is worth raw, but I know where to get a good idea of where that information is and, and be able to use that information to come up with um, a, a, a value that I think uh, makes sense. That's why I'm saying 65. I'd say if I were selling that book, I'd probably think eh, it's about a $50 book. That's what I would list. If I was putting that in bin, I'd probably put a $50 price tag on it and probably take less than that, right? If somebody's bundling stuff together, um, I wouldn't put it on my wall for $7,000. Um, can you do better for cash? The So if I, if I got a collection of stamps, I'd have no idea where to start with it. And the same is true a lot of people that have comic books. They see a Batman comic book. They look up something on the internet um, that says it was sold for $7,000. Boom, I'll order it for $69.50. It'll be a bargain. They don't understand the difference between graded and ungraded. Uh, a lot, Again, a lot of su subtlety and nuance. So um, I know the people that watch this channel um, are at different levels of comic collecting expertise. Some are just getting into the hobby, just getting back into the hobby. More collectors or readers than people who want to get stuff graded. And again, I've said it before, there's room for all types of collectors in this hobby, right? If you want to only collect graded books or only want to collect raw books or only want to collect key issues or want to collect runs or want to collect every issue from August of 1967, that is your, um, that is your privilege. That's, that's, you know, um, what is, what is a value to you? Um, if you, you know, if you want to collect 
all the books with a Marvel value stamp and cut all those Marvel sta value stamps out and put them in a Marvel value stamp book. Good for you. That's your right. I mean, it's kind of a sin, but, you know, I, I don't know of anybody that does that, but that's part of what this hobby is. So um, I think it's important to understand what you don't know, right? And not assume that you know more than you do. Um, I, <laughs> I am waiting for books to come back from CGC that I submitted through CCS uh, just about 13 and a half months ago. Um, when I did that, I did not know nearly as much about comic books, despite having been collecting them since the early 70s, than I do now. I didn't know how to clean and press. I didn't know who should clean and press. I was less confident um, on being able to ascertain a grade of a book than I am now, an approximate grade. Um, Reggie Collects and Doug Bratton uh, talk about dirty grading, being able to tell with a real quick view how much, you know, what kind of shape a book is in. Um, usually when you pick a book up at a, um, you know, you look at it in a bin, you just, you're going to look at it quickly. Like, you know, what is this book? Is it sharp corners? Yeah. A couple spine ticks. Yeah. That's about a seven, I would guess, you know, maybe a little bit better. Seven, eight, boom, put it back. Is it worth the price that they have it listed for? Um, is it something that I want to keep? Is it better than the, the one I already have in my collection? That sort of thing. Um, so there, there's a lot of um, factors that go in to the collecting piece of the hobby. What I would say for the collectors is to, for uh, people in the comic book community, and most people go this way, be respectful of everyone, even the people that don't really know what they're doing, unless they have ill intent. And I don't think the seller had ill intent in this case. I think the seller just um, got big eyes thinking they had something amazing on their hands. And since it hadn't, you know, they hadn't touched it since the 1970s, it was still in mint condition. There's a lot to be learned. Um, so for those of you that are newer back into the hobby, the most important thing to start with is understanding grading, knowing how to grade your books, at least have a relatively good idea of what defects to look for. Do you see color breaks in terms of spine ticks or corner bends? Uh, do you see creases or stains? Um, those sorts of things. That will give you at least move you more towards a ballpark of what the value is. The second thing is to maybe, at the very least, I said eBay, eBay sold is free. And understand the difference between a graded book by CGC, CBCS, PGX, or any others, and a raw comic book. Um, what the difference is between those, a 7.0 raw, 7.0 graded, you know, how much of a difference is there? That's a little, that takes a little bit more subtlety because not every eBay listing lists grade. Um, you can get an approximate grade from looking at pictures, but not always. So those two things are going to be the most important things in giving you an idea of what the value of your comic book is. Um, when I buy a collection, and this would be true of anybody that sells comic books at shows, on whatnot, have their own store, on eBay, etc., claim sales. If I buy a collection of a thousand comic books, even if it takes me one minute to look at the comic, grade it, and rebag and board it, right? Just one minute, right? That's 16 hours of work to go through that, right? Yeah. That's 16 hours of work to go through all that. And that doesn't include page counts, check for clipped coupons, all those sorts of things. And sometimes going through a collection quickly, you don't have time to do all that. Um, you know, so it's easy to miss things, but you want to get it right. You want to know what the book is and if it does have any major defects that will affect the value. And, you know, a seasoned collector, sometimes I get to the point where I pick up a book, I go, hmm, that seems a little light. And sure enough, oh, count the pages, there are pages missing. I just came across a couple books like that in a collection I had picked up recently. Not a collection, but books I had picked up at a flea market recently. Most of them were fine. A handful of them had all the ad pages ripped out. Um, so 
that's something you know that that goes into all of that is being able to identify what it's worth is it in top condition does it have tape on it does it have writing in it does it and has it been restored did somebody try to use color touch on it that takes an awful lot of time and all of these these terminologies that we use i think are um ones that the it's important to know what they are actually that's a good idea for a future video jim do a do a vocab glossary um comic book community vocabulary list um so that's important to understand um and also f understand what you don't know and that's important for two reasons. If you go to a an expert, let's say you go to your local comic shop, bring in a box of comics from your childhood, and they offer you a certain amount of money. Understand that they know more than you do. They want to make a profit. They don't want it. If the books are worth $500, they don't want to give you $500. Right? Even if they're worth $500 at that moment, you know, regardless of rebagging and boarding and organizing, all that sort of stuff. If a fair price, they're not going to offer you $500. Okay? So understand that going in blind, you're going to leave money on the table. Having more information is going to get you more money, but it is also more time. So there's that, um, you know, waiting of, Time versus money. Is it worth your time to, to get a little bit more information on this? Try to find someone that perhaps you trust that can give you, um, you know, evaluate your collection. Um, there, are, there are all sorts of ways to find people who will pay you for your comic books. There are people who advertise on Craigslist all the time that are not, um, don't have their own stores. There are people that buy collections like myself. Maybe try a few of them. Try, you know, try to to get the best for your buck. Um, you know, if so, for instance, if this person, they opened up an eBay account to sell this one comic book. If they had just put it up for auction, what would they get? 40, 50 bucks for it, probably. That would have been a fair price. Obviously, it would take it takes time to list stuff on eBay. Believe me. Um, and especially if you're not listing all the time and you don't haven't. Um, developed a uh, a system for doing it. it it takes a long time to find the right category and price it correctly and the shipping information uh, shipping profile it's quite laborious but in the long run if you have stuff that has some value that is probably worth it for many of us like i said if i inherited a stamp collection It'd probably be worth my while to get it off my hands fairly quickly for a decent amount of money. Let's say maybe I sold it for a thousand dollars, but it's worth ten thousand dollars. Is the other nine thousand dollars in between it worth me putting the time and effort into developing any sort of expertise from going from like zero? So that's what kind of um, I always keep in mind when I look at this because the other thing too is. If you look behind me, I have a lot of comic books, right, all over the place here. I'm not even sure exactly what I have. And it takes a long time to process that many comic books and put them in the right places, right? What do I want to sell on whatnot? What is a little more esoteric and should go on eBay? What do I want to put in my bins for shows? What do I want to keep in my personal collection? What do I think has value and condition to be sent off to be graded by CGC? You know, that's a, you know, a constant part of the collection, the collecting thing. So um, I'm going to cut it off right here. I've been babbling long enough. Um, we did see this kind of ridiculous uh, listing on eBay. We see them all the time. And I didn't want to use this to kind of make fun of the seller, but just kind of point out that it's out there. For the most part, it's people who are doing it this because they don't have the, the expertise. They're not trying to 
um, get something over on someone else. They think that what they have is worth what they thought they're asking for it, and it's not. And if you're one of those people that thinks you have something really valuable, you know, ask someone with some expertise, right? And then maybe say, thank you, we'll think about it, and do a little bit more digging on your own. So anyway, uh, in the meantime, take a look at a couple of other videos that I posted recently. And this is Jim saying until next time, enjoy your comics.